Welcome, everyone. It is a joy to gather together here in our Lord's house. Um, some announcements to make. One, you will notice in your bulletin an insert for some other place. And so I'd encourage everybody to take a look at that and begin to think how we might um, um, donate the types of things that will be needed there for that ministry. So, and thank you for putting that together for us. The other is um, March the 2nd, the first Wednesday in March is Ash Wednesday, and we will be having a service at noon here in the nave. And I'm not going to be putting ashes on everybody, uh, just for the sake of I'm not going to come and you know touch one to the next, the next, the next, the next. Um, but we will have a penitential service together. And um, the other is that our pastoral candidate to become pastor of First Lutheran is the Reverend Mark Swanson. And some of you might already know Mark Swanson. I have his bio here. It's going to be in the um, newsletter, and we'll be getting that kind of information out. I also have in the newsletter, um, thanks to Peter, his letter of recommendation. When the call committee first recommended Mark to the council, he wrote a, a letter that captured what we all thought, uh, council and call committee both. So that's included in um, the upcoming newsletter, too. And on... March the 5th, Saturday, March the 5th, from 3.30 to 5 will be a meet and greet downstairs. And then, of course, March the 6th, that first Sunday of Lent, um, with Holy Communion, Pastor Mark will be here. But I'll go ahead and read his bio to you that he sent us. And it says, Pastor Mark Swanson is in his 34th year of ministry. Pastor Swanson is a Jamestown native, was an active member of Emmanuel Lutheran Church, where he was baptized, confirmed, and ordained. Pastor Swanson is a graduate of Jamestown High School, Jamestown Community College, State University of New York at Fredonia, and the Lutheran Theological Seminary at Philadelphia. He spent his early years in ministry serving congregations in Queens, New York City, Dansville and Cahocton in rural upstate New York, and for 18 years was pastor of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Coopersburg, Pennsylvania. More recently, he served as interim pastor of three congregations in the Allentown area of Pennsylvania, as well as serving as pastor of two congregations in the rural coal region of eastern Pennsylvania. Pastor Swanson is now completing an interim assignment in the Syracuse area. He's married to Reverend Laura A. Salak, who is the chaplain at Lutheran in Jamestown, and with whom he has two adult children, Stephen and Luke. Pastor Swanson is an avid runner, gardener, and Chicago clubs, Chicago clubs, Chicago Cubs, Baseball enthusiast, they use clubs, no, they use bats, sorry. He can, often, he can often be found in his backyard tending to his chickens and walking with his beloved Labrador retriever, Bailey. So that's just a quick introduction uh, to Mark, and we'll be getting to know him much better before our vote. Friends, let's arise and join in confession together. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you.
Make us instruments of your peace, that where there is hatred we may sow love, where there is injury, pardon, and where there is despair, hope. Grant, O divine master, that we may seek to console, to understand, and to love in your name. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is from Genesis chapter 45. Many years after being sold into slavery by his jealous brothers, Joseph reveals himself to them. Now the second in command in Egypt, Joseph reassures his brothers that God has used their evil intentions for good to preserve life during a devastating famine, 
and Joseph re re forgives them. Excuse me. And we read from Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here to preserve life. For the famine has been in this land two years, and there are five more years in which there'll be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve for you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all of his brothers and wept upon them, and after this, his brothers talked to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. according to Luke chapter 6. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said, But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful just as your father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over to your lap. For the measure you give, will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Christ. Lord Jesus, we ask that you would help us to love where it seems impossible to love, to look toward those who are full of meanness in this world, and to pray for them and to love them into your arms. We ask that you would help us never to return evil for evil. In Jesus' name, amen. When I was about 12 years old, I guess, 12, 12 years old in the 12th grade. No, that's not right. 12 years old in the 6th grade. Um, that's better. 
When I was 12 years old in the sixth grade, we lived in a suburb of San Diego, California. And in our class, there were two Dans. There was Dan, who was brilliant. <laughs> what? Who was, <clears throat> could get all the answers, no matter what the question was, who was a marvelous painter, whose voice was already such Oh, yes, such a rich baritone that they kicked him out of the sixth grade choir because they only had sopranos and altos and all the boys were expected to be one or the other. And there was Danny. And Danny was the kid who was, I have no idea what his background was, but he was the kid that was always getting in trouble, flunking his tests, and <clears throat> just seemed like a, a pest to the class and to the teacher. Well, one day, I was walking home from school. We only lived a couple blocks straight down from the school. And I heard a voice behind me. I had just crossed the intersection where the principal's office, then the, then the road, and then the sidewalk. The principal's office was no farther away from me than the wall, closer than that even. And <clears throat> I heard this voice behind me. Hey, you! Hey, you, you, turn around. And I turned around. And guess who was behind me? Danny. Danny was behind me. And Danny had another kid um, next to him who, as soon as I saw him, I thought, what in the world are you doing here? You're not like that. But Danny was there in the middle of the intersection, scrouching a little bit, making his face look mean. And in his hand, he was swinging a chain in front of the principal's office, no less. But anyway, so Danny said, come here, I wanna smack ya. I'm gonna, I'm gonna beat you up. Now Danny and I you know, had no, you know, contentions with each other in school, no reason why. There was just Danny and Dan, and maybe that was too much for Danny. And so he's thinking his thing, ready to beat me up. But I wasn't alone either. I had a friend next to me who was that big and he was that big and he was fearless and he just walked up to Danny in the middle of the road, took the chain and pulled it out of his hand and said, boo. <laughs> and Danny and his friend ran away and that was the end of any contentious behavior for the rest of the year. There was someone who wanted to hate me, wanted to hurt me, wanted, for whatever reason, I have no idea, just maybe <clears throat> not liking that I received positive attention and he didn't, who knows. And I can remember not hating him, not wanting to go back and say, if you threaten me, I'm going to threaten you. I was a little young to understand maybe something was hurting him and I was very very glad that I had a guardian angel you know the thing about this this big kid that was right there and took the chain away and the danger away I don't know who he was we were walking home together the first block and at the end of the first block he turned and went his own way I don't remember ever seeing him before that or after again I don't know, maybe he was a 12-year-old guardian angel who happened to be big, but he was there. But in our lives, there is not always a 12-year-old guardian angel at our side who is ready to pull the chain that would abuse us. There is a lot of meanness in the world. There is a lot of abuse and hurt and victimization, humiliation in the world. And we hear Jesus speaking in his Sermon on the Plain, we call it, because Moses was on the mountain. I mean, Jesus and Matthew was on the mountain, and this time he's on a plain in Luke. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Offer your other cheek. Do not withhold your cloak. How do we 
manage to do that? Don't we feel some meanness in ourselves sometime when somebody is doing that to us? All of us, I dare say, have some bit of meanness in us some way. At the first service, I couldn't say Danny and Dan. I kept saying Danny and Danny, and I figured that's maybe because I was a little bit in my own way like him. But Jesus calls us in the midst of the hurt to love, not to seek revenge, not to hurt back. Now, to be sure, that never means that if an individual is being abused, sexually abused, physically abused, mentally abused, verbally abused, however they are being abused and diminished, that out of love they should stay there and take it. Never. God calls us to peace. And it may very well be that holding that individual who has that nature, holding them accountable for their victimization, may be just the thing that will catch them finally, that will be the thing that finally said to Danny, hey, you don't need to be threatening people with a chain. That is not going to bless your life and make you better than the person you beat up. It just doesn't work that way. It just makes you mean and petty and frightened of something. The loving thing may very well be to turn away, not to turn back with our own chain, just turn away. When that little incident was done in front of the principal's office, I just turned away and went home. How do we manage to love as Jesus calls us very clearly in these passages to love and not return hurt for hurt Vengeance for vengeance. But to love. Yesterday, I was a part of a funeral service for a gentleman, he and his wife I've known for many, many years because of my relationship with them um, through Lutheran. And this gentleman was a man who had some pretty hard times in his life. You know, I talk about someone being mean to us. Well, who is the person that might be the most mean to us, the most hurtful to us, or the most dangerous to us? Ourselves. Oftentimes, ourselves. Our own destructive, self-destructive behaviors. And there was a part of this once in that man's life. But then he found Christ Jesus and became a deeply beautiful Christian. A man who always gave of himself. Always. The pastor uh, of his church, as he was doing his message, said that um, my friends... <clears throat> motto, slogan, was one day at a time, sweet Jesus. Not just one day at a time, but one day at a time in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, sweet Jesus. And Jesus is the one who, as he shares these thoughts, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, we look to Jesus for where the power to do that resides and fills our spirits so that we can at least make an attempt. At least. And what we look to Jesus to see is that Jesus 
in his death and in his resurrection, he has overcome the final enemy. Whatever any other enemy can do, he has overcome the final enemy. And what is that final enemy? It's death. Death is the last enemy to be conquered. And he has conquered it in his cross and in his rising. And because he has risen, so shall we, so shall my friend. And no matter what we might do to ourselves that harms ourselves in this life, or what we might do to others, or what others might do to us, or just circumstance of illness, whatever it may be, it does not have the final word. Not even death. The final word is Christ who loved us all so that we might be forgiven. Whatever our meanness and live. So at the service yesterday, I was asked to sing a song, Bill and Gloria Gaither song, that spoke to that victory, that spoke to the power that gives us the ability to turn the cheek, to not revenge, but to love as hard as love can be. It's a little song that's called Because He Lives. God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal, and forgive. He lived and died to buy my pardon. An empty grave is there to prove my Savior lives. And because of that, because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Because he lives, all fear is gone. Because I know he holds the future. Life is worth the living. Whatever else we face, Danny outside, Danny inside. Life is worth the living just because he lives. Amen.
whole church, let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance, so we are bold to pray for the Church, the world, and all that God has made. You teach us to love our neighbors and enemies alike. Encourage your church to follow the leading of your love, especially when it is risky or difficult. Help us to show mercy just as we have first received mercy. God of grace, hear our prayer. Nurture fields that lie dormant, resting until it is time to bloom again. Bless farmers and all who cultivate fields and urban gardens. Give favorable weather for planting, Bring forth from buried seed an abundant harvest and guard against famine and disease. God of grace, hear our prayer. Look upon our world with mercy that we, that we delight in an abundance of peace. Protect all whose lives are marred by war and civil unrest. Release political prisoners and amplify the voices that challenge us to seek forgiveness and pursue nonviolence. God of grace, hear our prayer. Your people cry out for mercy. Console hearts that long for forgiveness. Mend broken relationships. Heal bodies that suffer chronic pain or illness. Strengthen and deliver all whose spirits are troubled. God of grace, hear our prayer. You bind us together into one family. Teach us to forgive one another and to resolve conflicts with humility and patience. Bless families of all shapes and sizes and show love to those who are lonely or grieving. God of grace, hear our prayer. Tend to all in need of your compassion. Hear the cries of those awaiting justice and those yearning for forgiveness. Give community to the lonely and neighbors to the outcast. Shelter all who are vulnerable in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for Sandy, Jen, Bonnie, Cindy, Jillian, Jack, Elise, Xander, Olivia, Donna, and those we name aloud or in our hearts before you. God of grace, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We praise you for the saints who have inherited the fullness of your kingdom. As you have raised them to imperishable and, and eternal life, sustain us in faith by the promise of resurrection. God of grace, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and faith, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us turn to one another in peace. Peace, Peter. Peace. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. 
and give you peace, and give you peace forever. The Lord be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you. And give you peace, and give you peace, and give you peace forever. Amen. Go with Christ into a weary world. Share the good news. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.